Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you three ways that you can make a positive impact in the world. You know, I hear a lot of people saying that they want to make an impact, they want to do something good for the world, they want to live a life of purpose, but they really don't know where to begin, they don't know what they should do. So this video will give you some clarity on how to find something purposeful and impactful that's going to make the world around you a better place and make your life a celebration. Okay, I've got a lot to say on this topic to help you find purpose in life, but I want to keep this video fairly short so that even the people with the shortest attention spans can watch till the end and have some basis, some framework that they can start with. So this is by no means all I have to say about this topic, but it gives you a great starting point, some things to think about, and, and of course, if you're interested in this topic and you want to learn more in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all the new stuff. Okay, now let's get into the framework. Think of society like a ship, like a big cruise ship. And I'm going to draw a picture for you to illustrate what I'm talking about. So you have, uh, there's, there's three parts, there are three types of people, let's say. So, excuse my horrible drawing skills here, but this is going to be our cruise ship. Okay, didn't really leave myself very much room there. So, you have three compartments of people. You have the front compartment, the middle compartment, and the back compartment. Now, this corresponds with three types of people that exist in society. Now, at the front, you have what I call the strivers. Now, these are the people who are trying to do something with their lives, that they're trying to create something, they're trying to invent something. Maybe they're artists, maybe they're business owners, they're entrepreneurs. They're the ones that are at the front. They are at the helm of the ship. They're the ones that are driving society. Okay, and then at the very bottom here, these are what I call the strugglers. These are people who can never seem to find a comfortable place in life. They're always living off of somebody else. They're living off of their parents. They're living off the government. They can't seem to find a stable job. They're basically in a constant battle just to stay alive. And then in the middle, this section, I call the settlers. These are 90% of society. This is where most people find themselves, is in the middle. The, what I call the settlers, because these are the people who would like to be up here, they would like to be doing something impactful with their lives, but they never really try. They've convinced themselves that it's too hard or they're not worthy or something like that, but they're comfortable, right? They have a job that's paying all their bills, they don't have to worry about starving, they're not, you know, worrying about being on the streets like these people down here. So these are the people that are just kind of coasting through life, they're not particularly happy, but they're not starving either. Most people who work normal jobs are in this settler's category. Most people in general are in this settler's category. Okay, so all of society is contained within this cruise ship. Everybody is either a striver, a settler, or a struggler. And of course, you know, the same person can be at various different stations and various different times in life. So if you want to make an impact in the world, there's three ways to do this. Now, the most obvious is just to be a striver. Right? Get in the front of the ship. These are the people that are driving the ship forward. And by the way, that's probably not how cruise ships actually work. I don't know where the captain sits or where the engine is, right? So it's just an analogy. Anyway, so you could be a striver. You could be the person who is pushing the whole ship forward. Because if you're pushing the whole ship forward, then the, you know, you're pushing yourself forward, you're pushing the settlers forward, and you're pushing the strugglers forward. A lot of people don't really understand that which is you know, why we have socialist governments and, and people who hate the rich and people who hate entrepreneurs. But if you think about it, like the person who invented the light bulb, or the person who invented the dishwasher, or the person who invented the electric motor, or the person who invented the automobile, and not only the person who invented it, but the person who brought it to market, the person who marketed it, who made people realize the value in it, right? They made everybody's lives better and the musicians and the artists that poor and rich alike can enjoy. The more people contribute up here as strivers, the better life gets for everybody. A rising tide lifts all boats, as they say. 
So one way to make the world better is to be up here, is to be a striver. Now, I actually came up with this idea because I read the book The Fountainhead by Anne Rand. And in that book, that book is all about glorifying the strivers, which I think is awesome. I actually did a review of my favorite quotes from that book, which you can check out right here if you like. Even if you haven't read the book, you'll still find it very inspiring because that book is a homage, so to speak, to people who live for some ideal and push, who strive incessantly to some ideal, even when it's difficult. So if you want to be a striver, I absolutely recommend that you check that out because that is seriously inspiring stuff. But in my view, that's not the only way. There's, that's only one of three different ways that you can make a positive impact on the world. And The Fountainhead doesn't really talk about the other two, or it doesn't talk about them positively anyway, which is why I decided to make this video, because I wanted to lay out this, what in my opinion is a more complete framework. So. One way is to, be a, uh, is to be a striver, but another way is to be a helper. So what a helper does is gets people from one stage to a better stage. So you could be a helper down here. Helper. And what you do is you help people who are strugglers become settlers. Probably not forever, right? They don't have to settle forever, but when you're struggling just to eat your next meal, to get to the point where you have the stability uh, and a steady paycheck, being up here is pretty good from their perspective. So the people that are helping the downtrodden and getting them from here to a place of stability and relative comfort are doing the whole world, the whole ship, so to speak, a great service because these people at this point are just dead weight. If you think about what the strugglers do in society, right, they take welfare. They, they eat up our tax money. They are usually the criminal class, right? The people that mug you on the street are part of this category. Or they pose a burden on, on a family member or a friend. They're a drag on society. So the more people you can get from here into here, uh, the, the lighter the ship gets and the faster the ship gets, so to speak. And so the faster all of society moves forwards. And of course, you're helping these people the most because now they have a much happier life than they did before. And by the way, when I say helping these people, I, I'm talking about helping them into a better situation. I'm not talking about just giving them food or giving them money, right? Especially not giving them money, especially if they're drug addicts, because these people have problems, right? They have psychological problems or they have addictions. They probably don't manage their money very well if you do give them money. So the, the idea is that you are teaching the man to fish rather than giving the man the fish. So you're making society better as a whole and you're making that person's life better for more than just a day. Okay, so that's the second way that you can impact society. And now the third way is also to be a helper, but instead of helping people from here to here, you're up here and you're helping people from here to here. You're helping the settlers become strivers. Now, why is this good for society? Well, for one thing, it's a lot better to be a striver than it is to be a settler. If you're a settler, you know, you're comfortable physically speaking, but your life is kind of meaningless. You're not gonna be very happy. You're probably gonna develop depression over time. You're always gonna want more. And then if you die being a settler, you're gonna die with a whole bunch of regrets. So you're doing these people a huge favor. And of course, just by the very fact that you are turning people from settlers into strivers means that you are putting more people that are on the top that are driving the ship, right? The more people that are driving the ship, the faster the ship goes, and the more every part of society moves forward. Okay, so now we have three different ways that you can make an impact in the world. Either you can be a striver, you can be a helper down here, or you can be a helper up here. And all of these uh, have their own specific set of difficulties. None of these is easy, so to speak. If you wanna be a striver, if you wanna start a business, or you want to, uh, be a musician or an artist or whatever, there's a lot of other people that are trying to do that. So you've got to get really, really good at whatever you're doing. You've got to put a lot of time and effort into it. If you're ever going to be at the level where you are making a positive impact and you stand out from the crowd. So that's the difficulty up here. If you want to be a helper down here, helping the strugglers, well, you got to deal with all the strugglers problems, right? They didn't just get down here by chance. I know that's politically incorrect to say, but it's the truth. If people are struggling, 99% of the time, it's because they have some problem that is making them struggle, right? I mean, I just go down the street and there's a hundred 
now hiring signs, but these people that can never find a job, they have a serious problem. Usually they're alcoholics or they're drug addicts or they have serious psychological issues. Maybe they just believe that they can't do anything right. Maybe they have serious anxiety, right? They can't take any sort of criticism or else they go crazy, right? So they can't keep a job. There's all sorts of reasons why people are down here. And you might find that getting them past that is easier said than done. Now, it's a very valuable effort and in many cases, and in fact, all cases, I believe it can be done, but realize that that's what you're fighting with. You don't tell, just tell somebody, oh, go to McDonald's and get a job, right? There's a much deeper problem because they probably thought of that themselves already. And then if you want to help people from uh, being settlers into being strivers, that's pretty difficult too because these people have their own psychological issues of a different sort that aren't keeping them, you know, that aren't keeping them homeless, but they're keeping them from ever trying. These people, a lot of these people have what's called golden handcuffs. So they have a job that's paying their bills and maybe giving them a pretty high standard of living. It's going to be really hard to get those people to give up that high standard of living for a little while. Because if you think about it, <clears throat> from somebody here, take a, a guy that's right in the middle of the ship. He's right in the middle of the settlers. He's completely average. From for, To him... Looking ahead, think of his perspective, looking ahead to the strivers up here. Well, it looks an awful lot like looking behind. From his perspective, this and this look exactly the same. Think about it. These people are struggling to keep their existence. These people are struggling to get better, to make an impact on the world. Both places, they're putting in effort. These people don't put in any effort. So they see people putting in effort, they might think, this person's a loser. This person's a struggler. Even though this person's putting in effort to do something great. Or they see this person who's going into debt to raise capital for his business, and to him, to this guy in the middle, it looks exactly the same as this guy down here who's going into debt to buy a bigger TV. An awful lot of people, and especially the majority of people in here, as I've been reading, have this mindset that if you put an effort to do something, that means that you're lacking, right? Because if you were talented, if you were, if you were deserving of being somewhere great, then you would already be there. You don't have to put in effort. They don't understand even the concept of effort. They think of people in terms of talented and not talented, of superior and inferior. And if somebody who is not talented tries to get talented, that's something that they don't really understand because they think of these as fixed categories, not something that you gain with effort over time. So if they see you that putting in effort, whether you're putting in effort up here or putting in effort down here, uh, it's the same thing to them. They just think of everybody down here. So there's all sorts of these psychological blocks that you have to get past to get people to change category, whether it's from here to here or from here to here. So I hope that gives you a starting point to figure out how you wanna make your impact on the world. So think about which, which one of these would be most satisfying to you. You know, God put the machinery into your mind already before you were born. You have a mission and I pretty much guarantee, unless I'm missing something here, that your mission is either to be a striver or a helper of one of these two categories. So figure out which is it that you were called to do. Figure out, kind of visualize yourself, quiet your mind, meditate a little bit. You know, a lot of people don't even ask inside for their own answers. They, they don't have any answers and they don't know how to ask inside. So quiet your mind and think about, visualize yourself in each of these three categories and figure out which one is most satisfying to you. And chances are, that whichever one you come up with, that's what you're called to do and that's what's gonna make your life a celebration. And if you figure that out, if you figure out which of these three you were called to do, let me know in the comments, share with everybody. And if you found this video helpful, I think you'll also really enjoy this video. And of course, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future stuff and share this video if you think that your friends would benefit from it as well.